Hello and welcome to Stream Tabulous. So I want to talk about easy diffusion today and things like how to do your prompt and get your prompt weights, which are key points of the image that you're trying to create to try to um, get that imagination out of your head better and those little tips and tricks. I want to talk about plugins for easy diffusion. Uh, it's something which is not in it by default. So I want to show you how you can add that on. And there's some little little tools in that uh, add-on which will help you out. And we'll talk about settings of Easy Diffusion as well. And one that I found actually helps me and I feel actually speeds it up. So before we do, we'll get you to hit that like button subscribe and get the bell on for notifications to see more videos. Uh, leave a comment below if this helps you out and if you're using Easy Diffusion. Um, there's plenty of different ones out there uh, and we'll talk about them right after the intro. So there's a few different art generators out there. There's Automatic 11. Uh, there's Focus, which is F-O-O-O-C-U-S, um, which is an easy to install one. And there's Easy Diffusion. And there's a whole heap of other ones as well. Um, I think it's Comfort AI. Uh, but I lean towards using Easy Diffusion because it's right in the name. It's actually easy to use. And I find I get some really good results out of it. But I do bounce between uh, Automatic 11 as well. But uh, let's go over and we'll take a look at um, Easy Diffusion. And I'll just show you the page for uh, Focus as well. It might be one that you're actually interested in. So here we're looking at the page, which is a GitHub page for Focus. And this is a very similar RAW uh, to Easy Diffusion. Um, it has a lot of automatic styles and that in there as well. You can add your models to it. And as you come down, there is a uh, an installer down here that you can click for Windows. And then you just hit the Run Bat. So similar... Uh, a little bit easier to do than Automatic 11 for the installation of it, um, but not as easy as Easy Diffusion. Now, if you haven't watched it, I do have a video on setting up Easy Diffusion, which I've left all the uh, little head scratches in, so you know what to actually encounter when you're actually uh, installing it. Um, it's easydiffusion.github.io, and then you have your uh, download in your download link there if you haven't got it. Now, let's talk about the plugin quickly. So I'll leave the link in the uh, description below, but uh, github.com right here for the uh, plugin. Your logical dyslexia, I can't quite make out that word, so forgive me there. So if you come down to here, you'll see uh, just here where we have, you just need to download this file, click the link, save as and save it to the folder plugins URL. So it's pretty quick, pretty easy. So we just click on that. We want to right click it, go save as. And then we want to find our folder for easy diffusion. So bear with me one second. Okay, so we're in the directory here for Easy Diffusion, and it says to go to your Easy Diffusion plugins, so main plugins manager. So here we are here, we go into plugins. It says put it in the UI file, we'll go here, save that JSON file, it is done. We'll come across to Easy Diffusion. I will close that off and relaunch it quickly. Okay, now that we're loaded up, you're going to see a new tab on your menu bar. So if you come across the top here, you'll see this Generals, Settings, and come over, you'll see Plugins. So this is what we've just added. Um, there is a lot of little handy plugins that you can add on. Um, 
it's entirely up to you on how you actually customize it but there are actually uh, prompts prompt helpers inside this actual plugin that you can also add on and use i have found um putting one or two of them on because these are third party and uh, easy diffusion automatically updates when you start it i have found one or two don't seem to actually appear but if you come down i'll just try to find one here that um, i do occasionally use which is a uh, out painting with me Okay, so this is out painting here. So if we click that on, we'll notice down here it says installed. Once we go back up to the top, we'll see straight away, no need to restart that we have the out painting here. So you can click those on. And what will happen is when you render a picture, you'll actually get the option to actually expand it in different directions, which we might actually take a look at later. Now, also one of the things we want to do is talk about speeding up easy diffusion. So if you come into your settings here, you've got all little things that you can actually do, including autosave images. Okay, so we can come down and what I find is this one here, GPU usage. By default, it is on balanced, which is meant to be fast and use low VRAM where low is meant to be the slowest but i've actually found that having it on low i actually get faster renders than having it on balanced or high now i do have a rtx 3060 in my um, lounge room computer um, which is made for gaming it doesn't have the streaming setup on it which is why i use this one uh, and that one, it's also in the same boat where I find if it's on balanced or high, it is not as fast to render as on low. And this system here is just running a GTX 1070. So very old graphics card. So that's a setting that I'd put on. I'd also advise to put beta channel on and use the new version three engine. You'll find all that actually helps and these are generally off by default when you install it so we want to do that now let's talk about prompts okay so i've loaded up a prompt here and one of the things which is really important is when you're doing your prompt data if you're not getting an image which you want you need to uh, know how to control it it's very complex and it's a completely different type of art form to describe and create an artistic image using words that the AI actually understands because you basically have to learn almost a different type of language speech to communicate to get across to the AI of how you want something generated for the art. Uh, different art generators do use different weight prompting, which is also something that you need to uh, know about. So the weight prompting on Easy Diffusion is different to Automatic 11. And we're talking about Easy Diffusion today. So what I've done here is we have our general. Now, don't forget, if you're wanting to control the image, also use your negative prompts as well. So, for example, if you want not to have a wide shot and only to have the focused head shots, remember to put wide shot in your negative prompts. So use both of these to help control it. If you don't want red in your image and you're getting red in the image, put red in your negative prompts. So you want to use both of those in conjunction to actually create your image. Now, weights are keywords in your prompt. So for example, I want Android Superman, and I want to make sure that I have this character in the images and it doesn't go off and try to generate a different type of character. So I have put a bracket, Android Superman, bracket, and then I have put 1.6, which is how much weight I want on that character. Now I have to watch how much weight that I put on a character. If it's too low, 
other prompts will take um, precedence. If it is too high, then other prompts for the character will be lost. So I need to find the balance between that. So zero is obviously, you know, the AI not paying attention to it. And then you step it up from there. Uh, two, I find is good. Three is generally the highest you go. Uh, going to three, I find can cause artifacts depending on the model that you're actually using. So keep that in mind. For this weight prompt here, I have put 1.6. I want a even weight. So he's in the images, but he's just generalized. I also want him to be a bit of a punk. So I've equaled the weight on that. So, so it takes those two ideas and merges them together. Uh, sometimes it might not generate that. I'd like him with a mohawk. So how heavy that mohawk is, I want to put the weight in here. And I want it to be stronger than these two, so it actually puts it on him a lot of the times. So I'm actually going to go 1.9 on that. I'd like some gold in the image and some chrome in the image. I'd like some reflectivity in the image. I'm going to put that up to a 1.8. So we come down and we basically just customize those weights. I'd really like to see a cyborg. I'd love to see embedded parts on him. So I'm going to put that up to 1.9. We'll see how that goes. And I'm going to remove this soft glow prompt down to a 1. So we'll just keep that low. So you just basically come through and we're adjusting our prompt weights to create our image. Now I'm going to be using an SDXL model. Something which is handy to know is XDXL models are different to an SD model. Uh, with the way these are trained, to the best of my understanding, they're loaded up with a lot of random images. It's not going to steal anyone's art. Uh, it's actually... Trained is the best word to do because it's like training a brain. It's trained to not copy one particular style. So it's usually creating a new style when it's actually doing the work. So that's something to keep in mind. And with an SDXL, they are generally better at actually understanding what you're writing in for the prompt. Um, which means they have information in there, which they don't necessarily have a image of Superman, but they have a understanding of who Superman is, like me describing it to you. Well, Superman is a superhero that has a red cape and is in blue, and he has a big S on his chest, which is generally um, surrounded by a sort of yellow triangle in a red border on the outside. So it has an idea of understanding who Superman is. So when it goes through, it can try to create that figure. Now, every model that you use will have different image sets that it can look at to try to go, well, this is similar. So maybe if I design this and change this. So depending on the model you use, you get different looks. So keep that in mind when you're loading it up. Obviously, the larger the image size, the longer it's going to take. However, it's important to know that um, with an XDXL model, you really want it to be a rather uh, high set image. Um, if you put it on a 512, you're usually going to end up with artifacts. A SD, just a normal SD 1.5 model, is trained on 512 by 512 images so that and above is fine and i think below that you normally get artifacts on it uh, but when you come to an sdxl model sometimes they're trained on the uh, 1024 by 1024 images so when you're compressing that data too small it creates a mess so there's a fine balance with what you can do uh, i find 768 is a nice even balance where you don't get too many problems with it so we're going to adjust that and we're just going to drop that down a teeny little bit and we're going to put that 
there for this one and i'm keeping it in that uh, aspect ratio that i want i've just put down to 20 steps to try to make it a little bit faster i'm going to drop this guidance scale back a little bit so take away that free liberty of the ai so it pays more attention to my prompt but i want it to also be smart enough that it can actually um work out how to um do things and merge so we're going to do that as that and then we're just going to simply hit make two images and we're going to sit back and wait and um, the first time you run this it will always take longer because it needs to first load up the model and depending on the model size before it starts rendering it may take a while so every time you change that model it needs to load that model and there is a wait time between it and that's something to keep in mind so we'll let this run for a moment and we'll come back and we'll take a look at those final results. I will point out that uh, if you look at your CMD running in the background, when you come down to here where it is doing the FP16, it is completely normal for it to have a bit of a long wait before it continues on to actually do the rest of its... Um, calculations in the background before it starts its render depending on your model it takes longer for this process here to go from fp16 and after it passes that it comes down to here and what we're waiting for is this wait bar to come up here generally you'll notice down here this bar is starting to move which now means that it's actually rendering the image but sometimes it will run once and that's just loading up um, the model in the background. So keep that in mind. Okay, so we have our first image up. I just want to show up here that running this SDXL model at this resolution here, we are roughly getting one minute and I can say just over a minute each image. Um, this one came up pretty quickly. Uh, the next one says it's going to take a minute 31 and maybe a little bit quicker than that. But we can see here that we have our mohawk on the image. We certainly have that uh, Android effect happening. And we have that Superman emblem. So we have that merger that we're actually looking for. If we take the weights away, we'll get more randomness and necessarily not necessarily actually get the image that we're looking for, which I find is not what we want. Um, you want to put weights in. You want to control that um, prompting data so you actually get the image that you're looking for. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to Easy Diffusion and SDXL models, at this current point in time, the control net does not work with an SDXL model. So if you are to wanting to put a pose in there for your Superman, which I would love to do, um, we can't currently really do that at that at this stage. It is hard to do. Um, if you get an error up here, when you put your control net in, you'll know that it's likely linked to your model. Uh, when I put my models in my folder, I actually specify little tags on the front of them so I know what they are. So I know if they're just a SD model, so standard or if they're an SDXL model. And we have new models now as well. We have LCMs. Can use an LCM in Easy Diffusion, but they're designed to be quicker. And at the moment, the version of Easy Diffusion that exists does not have the sampler, which would need to be an LCM sampler for the model to work correctly so it doesn't quite understand how to use it so it kind of uses the model as a normal model and it takes a while to actually uh, render an image uh, that's the other thing we can come over and take a look at <clears throat> civity ai there are control net models for SDXL that you can actually use in uh, Automatic 11 uh, or you can use in Easy Diffusion. Now, not all these will actually work in um, Automatic 11 or, sorry, in Easy Diffusion. 
So you may have to play with them. I did find uh, that one there works. The um, neurological dyslexia, the SARGZT depth. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't find any of the uh, sketch ones to work, which was a, uh, a shame. And I found one depth one to work as well, uh, which I can't remember the current name of it at this stage. So yeah, you just click on the uh, tabs there to go to the one that you actually want to look at. Um, it was not a queer. Just trying to remember that uh, depth one because with a depth you can load an image and get some control to it. It may have been the ten cent arc depth. I certainly ah there that's the one there. It was this one here, the T-H-I-B-A-U-D open pose. So I found um, this one here, not the Laura one. I found that one actually uh, worked with easy diffusion. So that gave us a, a little bit of control when using an SDXL model. Uh, but I also found that the render times were about four times as long. So that's something to keep in mind. But of course, you know, you may want to um, run your render overnight. So now what we can do here, if we wanted to, is we can put up our images and we can add more weights to them or lower weights to them. So we'll run two more of that. And while we're running two more of that, we can come up here and we can say, I only want an occasional image of the Mohawk. So I'll put that to one. And I want my punk look to be lower. And I want my cyborg look to be lower. With a tiny little bit of it. And I want my parts to be lower. So we can keep that like that. Da -da -da -da. So we can change these up a little bit. Perhaps we'll drop the reflections down as well, because we can see when we come down, we're getting some nice shine for reflections there. And then once we've done that, we can queue up another two images. So we can change the prompt information in here and give more strength or lower strength. So we can come through and we can do our blue i'll just write that in capitals capitals can help um with the weight strength as well and i want 2.0 for the blue and then i will render another two images of that so now they're queued up so what will happen is once it hits the end of this it will do this one here and then it will do this one here perhaps i don't want superman anymore and i want a different character in there so you can think of, uh, say, Iron Man. Well, he's already kind of, um, he's already a um, cyborg sort of looking character. So we won't do him. We'll do Captain America. My spelling is bad. So I'll put that in there. So I'll run two on that. So what we'll do is we'll just drop the, um, cancel that task there. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So we can see that we're getting an image popping out there of still the same prompt. And we can easily come through if we prefer to prompt and we can actually copy that prompt there and paste it up into there. Clicking this will hide our images. So if you're wondering why you're losing images and they're not coming up, it's because they're hiding. And that's probably a feature for the uh, fact that uh, you can do not safe for work. And, you know, I put in here not safe for work. Uh, sometimes you may need to put not safe for work nude in the negative prompts to make sure that you don't actually um, get that in your image. So, but if you were doing something like that and you wanted that and perhaps you wanted that privacy of someone not seeing your renders and you've walked out of the room, you can just click and hide. So it's actually a pretty good feature to actually have um, when you think of it in that aspect. 
perhaps it should be a toggle switch, which I would find better, which would be uh, hide my um, images uh, while rendering and then click to show images. So you can just click on and off and they pop up and close would be a handy little thing. Uh, perhaps someone will make that for a plugin. So speaking of the plugin, let's talk about that outpaint that we added. If you wanted more on the bottom of this image, you can just click here for the outpaint, which is our new option. Or if you wanted to extend all the sides, you click that and it will add on a bumper and actually add more to that image. So you can fill your uh, picture out a little bit more. What is important to know when you're doing the outpainting uh, is the seed information and prompt. If you're adding an image via a browser and a control net image, and you're wanting to use that outpaint, so you render up that uh, image with a low guidance scale, and then you want to outpaint on it, because you've loaded it, it's not going to know the existing information of the prior to actually do it. So to help control that, you want to add your seed and you want to make sure that you have your prompt data to actually get the, uh, so the AI knows what that image was. So when it's actually creating the um, out painting, it has an idea of what the original was because there, um, it has a hard time knowing otherwise. Uh, it's the same if you use a paint program and you just put a black border on the top of it and then you use the in-paint and you just in-paint that entire section. You'll also need the seed of that original image. You'll need the prompt of that original image and you should use the same model of the original image. And then when you do your uh, generation of it, the AI will in-paint and actually um, have an idea of what it's actually doing based on that information. So hopefully that's not too complex to understand. Seeds guide the image and sort of tell the AI, when I looked at this, I was looking at these parts. So it's kind of like um, me reading a book and if I had an identic memory and could remember the book, I could say page such and such, page, 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 and what information they were. So the seed's kind of like that. It's pointing it to all different aspects, so it guides it better. And we can see here what the weight's actually doing now that we've got our image up. So these were under the same prompt. So we've got a lot of that Android and the parts actually in here. I don't like that one, but um, can't deny that it's a Android, but certainly doesn't have that Superman. We can see that Superman there. We can see that Superman there. We can see that Superman there. So those weights are so important. Once we remove those weights, and we can see that I've removed the punk, so we just have a generalized Superman. We no longer have a Mohawk. We have our Superman, which I believe we remained on the same prompt. We dropped that cyborg down, which has played a massive part. As you can see, it's now going, well, I don't always have to put the cyborg in there and we're losing that cyborg look to Superman. And that's why we want to be having prompt data. If I generate a lot of these images, occasionally it will come down and it will do cyborg and you may get one or two renders with that in it. But for the most part, we're not going to get um, as much heavier weight where it is consistent. So if you want a consistency, make sure that you put the weights in. And they're the best tips that I can give you for um, getting that strength in there to create what you're imagining. So again, if you wanted wide shots and only wide shots, in the negative prompt, we would be putting headshot, close up, so we don't get those pushed to us randomly with the AI going, well, maybe you'll want this one. Um, it's the same with up here, we would put wide shots and zoomed out and full bodied. So it goes, okay, we don't want it close up. We don't want the headshot. And up here, I've got wide shot, zoomed out, 
put zoomed in in the negative prompt and then it will make sure that we have the full body of that character in the image so weighting is very important to creating your design and it's actually really hard to um to find a lot of information on uh, how to actually do your weights which is why i'm doing this video uh, originally i thought it was the column and then the um the weight because what a lot of people say is well you do close um close up and then you do column and then you would do 2.0 and all right and that would be your uh, weight there so i found that doesn't work and then i played with it where people went well you'd have to put that in the brackets and i put it in the brackets and it still didn't work and then other people said well no 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 you've got to do it as brackets and then you've got to do your column and then you need to put your weight in that didn't work and then another person said no 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 you don't want the column on that that is uh, a automatic 11 thing you just want the number at the end of it and then when i did that i found everything i did started working which is why i am making this video and i've been using it for a little while now but um i forgot to actually push it and mention about it um because i've been doing the other videos of course so this one today uh someone went uh, you're really fantastic at uh, doing it you've got a real talent to it um you know uh, how are you controlling it so well? well this is how i'm controlling it and we can see we've got a uh, a captain america now with um the basic look now of course i still haven't put the uh, weight prompt up on the cyborg or anything like that we're getting a little bit of that look as it comes into the eyes. So we have very, very slight amount. But if we put that up stronger, we would get a lot more of that in there. So again, we can come down, we can find our word cyborg. We can go back and go, well, how was I getting the consistent cyborg down here? And we can go, well, it was 1.9, 1.9, and we can put that into here the 1.9 uh which i've already done just here and then we can go make another two images and that cues it up now i haven't seen a queue feature in um automatic 11 so i do love this feature in easy diffusion um i like easy diffusion um that's pretty clear i do use automatic 11 uh they're different to each other if you want to turn a, a portrait of someone into a sketch uh, automatic 11 is far above easy diffusion for doing that um, if you want to create artwork purely from a prompt uh, i find easy diffusion is a little bit more simple because it has been built with information to add to your prompt in the background so it actually controls it a little bit better so you get that where automatic 11 you need to be a prompt master you need to go through and put a lot of information in there to actually get your image uh, that said i mean a lot of information is good so hyper realistic and we push that over and over i say uh, realistic i say photo uh, say hyper realistic uh, anatomical for anatomically correct uh, i put random words in wires microchips um, cables so when it is doing the ai it goes okay cables and it's not just plates so a lot of prompt data is what you want so there we go for that and we can see here this one doesn't really have any of the ai in it hasn't been pushed and we're now generating our close-ups here for our Captain America. And we have that higher cyborg down there. Uh, I'm not expecting to get mohawks because it's such a low weight. Um, I can see that I've got the golds in the images. And perhaps that sort of chromation look in the images as well. So we're getting that in there, uh, which is a 
fairly high weight, um, which is what I want for those colors. And I imagine I should really put the reflective up. That would have helped the um, the cyborg sort of look be a little bit better. Uh, but we're running through, and we'll give that a moment. There's Civity AI. We come across to it. it. Has a lot of models on it. And when you come over, and I don't believe I'm signed in, which is good, because if I was... It's possible that you may get some not safe for work. If you're seeing this, that's a not safe for work. But, however, not safe for work models are actually fantastic to have. And I know that is a bizarre thing to say, but they have more realistic skin tones, more realistic eyes, more realistic features, more realistic hair, and there's a lot to a not safe for work model which has is a lot better for generating a more real character. If we come back across and we look at these and we come down to Superman, we'll find that these have a, a rendered quality to them that looks like they've been done in something like a computer game, Unreal Engine. Um, and that is generally what you're gonna get across the board with a lot of models. Um, but when you come across and use a not safe for work one, um, because of the way they've got that realism embedded into it and it's taught for realism, you get more realism in it. And of course you don't have to use them for not safe for work images. That's why you have that information in your negative prompt. And then when it's creating the clothing and that on top of it, you have a more realistic face. So don't shy away from them. Um, controlling this to look for the models that you want we come down here and we see a lot of different models if you've got a very low end computer excuse me hiccups you may want to stick to the 1.5 model uh, if you've got a more higher end uh, computer or you're okay with waiting long periods of times which I don't mind waiting uh, that extra length you want to come down to these SDXL models, like the one. LCMs work better in, um, I think it's the Comfity UI or AI. Um, and they, I've seen people are using it in Automatic 11. Um, I've tried it in Automatic 11 and I'm getting 8 minute, 16 minute um, renders. Uh, for some reason, it's just not working on my system. And I do not know why, because they're... Um, I've looked at people running the same systems and they're getting great speeds. So something to keep in mind, uh, Easy Diffusion really doesn't support them. SDXLs, you can click that. Checkpoints are the models. So when we do that, we get only the checkpoints, which are the XLs. So you can come through and you can pick what you actually want for the style of art. They devilish realism, more realism in the actual um, features and that. Um, again, I find that even though these are more realistic for the way they're trained, I still find that they have more of a plastic look. Uh, they don't really have that close up dirty skin tones and that, that um, unfortunately the Not Safe for Works have. Um, and I don't know why that is. I just assume it's the amount of training done when the AI is actually learning, it's paying attention to a lot of the uh, clothing details. And then when it's rendering the face, perhaps it's adding some of these um, sort of glossy looks and these synthetic looks to the um, the final style where perhaps with the not safe for work ones, because there's no clothing on them at all, it's just learning skin a lot better. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, Models are so important. I mean, there is so many different models for so many different art styles for um, if you're doing something like um, cyberpunk or if you're doing um, something like uh, steampunk or if you're doing sort of Lord of the Rings sort of looks uh, or that mythical sort of looks. And you can mix these up. We can come through and just go Laura's. And then Alora is a attack on model. So oh, we'll keep that ticked. We'll go Laura. We'll move checkpoints from here. So you have your main model 
and then you can tack on a model. So you could um, essentially have two styles together. So we could use this Star Wars character here uh, where it's trained with um, TV and movie series of uh, live action of the Star Wars. And we could incorporate that with the checkpoint, the base model of an animation. And then if we have our Laura weight um, not too strong, we can find that balance between actually mixing those models together. So we end up with um, the two combined together. So we have the live action, but as a cartoon image. And of course, in your prompt data, you'd also put cartoon and you'd have very heavy weight to it to also help override that um, model trying to push for what it was actually trained for. So this is with the cyborg up. We have our final renders and we can see that there's um, more of that sort of look to it. And we can go heavier weight. We should really put the embeddings up on that, but we can see there's sort of that... Um, heavy sort of mechanical look to the actual image so that's how to um, control the weight and i hope this wasn't too confusing so there it is there's my tips and tricks on using easy diffusion and hopefully they help I will do a, um, a stable diffusion uh, 1.5 uh, video which is the uh, lower models and show um, just the control net for uh, doing poses and I've shown the sketch before so I don't want to go too strongly into that but uh, I want to give a better understanding on that um, pose by itself so I will be doing a video on that one and i mean i'm really hoping this video helps a lot of people out so please don't forget to like subscribe and get the bell on now there's um we're talking about uh the ai art generators there's of course also in um i think it's vision fx which is an add-on for um for um, 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 um paint shop pro and that is using stable diffusion it is using the exact same engine that we actually use today and that's designed to basically uh, interface with um, paint shop pro and use your image that you have on your screen as the um, as a control net and then apply effects to it so and of course that's about uh, 80 dollars and Easy Diffusion is 100% free and you can do the same things and this is what I do, import them into Paint Shop or Photoshop or um, Photopede if you're using the online one and then you can go through and do your editing there, you can do your composites, your layers and so forth which I've talked about in prior videos. So that's Easy Diffusion and a lot of the tips and tricks that I can give you on how to create um, beautiful, perfect artwork and how to create your weights to it. Um, I also want to give a shout out to a group and we'll just go across and um, I'll show you a uh, image of the group. So this is the uh, Facebook group Paint Shop Pro. Um, and you would think that it's only paint shop, but underneath their, um, their rules, they're open to all artwork. So if you're painting or if you're using art generators, uh, you're, they're pretty much welcoming absolutely everyone, which is a fantastic to see because there, there's a lot of communities out there which are against AI artwork, which is an absolute shame because, uh, Adobe and as I mentioned uh, Corel with its Vision FX are all using stable diffusion and there is no difference with those than using easy diffusion and then taking your images in and putting them into uh, Paint Shop Pro and so forth afterwards. So um, you know you can get on there and uh, post your work and show your work and uh, it is a great group to be in.
they're also really helpful with uh, helping each other out. So there's a lot of people going, well, how did you do that? And a lot of people talking about it. So I think that's an absolutely fantastic thing to see from a group. And uh, I've tried a lot of groups and to be quite frank, a lot of them aren't very friendly, um, which is a shame. And this one is a really good one. Uh, there is two versions of the group. To what I'm aware, one does not allow anything but paint shop pro so keep that in mind when you're joining the group uh, unfortunately for some reason i was blocked from the other version of the group which i don't know uh, how that happened because i have um i mean i reached out and they say that i'm not in the block list or anything like that but um i sign out and i can see the group if i use a different account i can see the group but with my main account, I cannot see the group, which is um, a little bit heartbreaking to me. There were a lot of uh, nice people in it that probably wondered whatever happened to me. Uh, that was before I uh, even started uh, doing this sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, this group is fantastic. So I would recommend get onto that. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, get the bell on for notifications. I hope this video helps you out. And I hope these tips and tricks work for you. Let me know in the comments below um, if you're finding the same as me with that CPU uh, or that GPU from high, balanced, low. If putting low on for you speeds up and helps you out the way that it's actually helped me out, um, I'd be interested to hear that. And of course, I will see you in the next Stream Tabulous video. Thank you for watching my video and sticking around to the end. If you like my videos, it really help me out if you could like and subscribe. It helps the YouTube algorithm to push my videos out there to more viewers, which in turn helps me and helps everyone. So thank you for watching my video and hanging around to the end, and I will see you in the next video.